welcome back and welcome to another book review video. I haven't done just a single book review for a little while for you so I thought it was about time and this book uh, really blew me away so I thought that I would talk about When Elephants Fly by Nancy Richardson Fisher. This is a young adult novel that was published in the US on the 4th of September. Uh, my lovely friend Bethany, I will leave her channel somewhere um got this for me at bookcon uh, i think she got it um but thought of me because it sounded right up my street which is so true um and then i read it with my friend jenna i will leave her blog linked below i think doing a buddy read is a great way of um sort of unlocking your thoughts and feelings on the book because I knew straight away what I wanted to say in my review because the whole way through this book I'd been chatting about it with Jenna. She actually ended up reading this in one sitting, um, well in one day. I think I probably could have done, I read almost half of it in one day and then the next two days were just really busy days for me so I ended up picking it up in bits and pieces but I finished it reading in the library and crying in public in the library so if you saw me in my library crying this was why but then I was holding this book so you probably knew that already. Um, one of the things that Jenna mentioned was the fact that it reminded her initially of a bit like a, a John Green novel and I was thinking at the time and kind of all the way through the fact that this book is very, very honest and that's why it feels a little bit like a John Green novel because one of the things he does really well is he is completely honest and doesn't speak down to his audience and that's one of the reasons he's been so successful um, because he doesn't dumb anything down, he doesn't sugarcoat anything, everything is very raw and very real and very the way it is in the adult world. Um, and this novel is exactly the same. There are a lot of facts and figures about elephants and elephants in captivity and zoos and circuses and at no point does the author dumb any of it down. She might explain these things by one of the other characters asking oh well, what does that mean or what impact does that have on real life or on the world um but at no point does she go oh you can't handle these facts and figures so we're not going to talk about that um there's also no sugarcoating any of the um violence towards elephants or the issues that elephants can have in captivity whether that's in the circus or in the zoo um so there are some there is some violence against elephants and violence against people in parts of this book, so just be warned about that. The other thing that um, doesn't get sugarcoated is the fact that our main character, um, her mother had schizophrenia and basically uh, that landed her in jail and ended with her suicide. No point is that sugar-coated but at no point is that the main issue of the book either. Our main character knows that it is a genetic disease and knows that she has a very likely chance of developing it from the age of 18 and so um, she has a best friend who tests her on a regular basis to see where her mental health is at, whether she is in that zone for being classed as schizophrenic or borderline schizophrenic um which is interesting speaking of the friend the lovely sawyer i really liked and jenna really liked as well the fact that that friend is not a love interest we see them at school together he is her best friend they have an amazing relationship but he's gay and she has no interest in dating him and so they have this purely platonic relationship which is just wonderful to see because so often in young adult contemporary novels the male is just there to be a love interest so I like the fact that they have this wonderful friendship. He has an awful lot of money as well which is really interesting seeing the effect that that rich lifestyle and that kind of absentee parents but parents who are willing to buy you a lot of stuff has on a teenager that was an interesting subplot um then i just love the fact that this novel is very balanced we have this debate about 
um, the care of elephants in zoos versus the care of elephants in the circus. We have the issues that there are with zoos and the issues that there are with circuses, but also the benefits that there are with both of those things to the people and the creatures that are associated with them. And at no point does the author sort of share her opinion or show bias towards one over the other. Um, almost the same way with the schizophrenia storyline, we know that this is an issue for our main character, we know that she is struggling with it, but at no point does it become, I know I have a mental health problem and this is the sole focus of this novel. This novel is about a baby elephant called Swifty or Swift Jones and I a week on I am still thinking about that little elephant and dreaming about that little elephant and there are a lot of Peter Pan references in this novel and I think that's why it's called When Elephants Fly because obviously in Peter Pan you can fly off to Neverland and in that world anything can fly and anything is possible and there are a lot of um, references to The Little Prince as well which is interesting because I love books that reference other books. Um, the ending of this book definitely broke me. There are just some really, really wonderful moments. There's this character called Wes that shows up at some point. I'm not going to tell you who he is or what he does, but basically his entire <laughs> involvement in the book just made me cry. Um, I want a Wes in my life. Either way, just, oh, it's lovely. And then it's one of those endings where you don't really get closure. Sometimes that is the best way, but as I say, I've been thinking about Swift Jones ever since finishing reading the book, and I want some closure. Somebody has to write like fan fiction ending for this book so I can get some closure. But I just really love this novel. It's a great YA contemporary novel. It covers mental health issues really well. It covers the issues of zoos versus circuses versus not <laughs> really well. Um, it has a platonic male-female relationship. It has issues of money. It's very much a coming of age and it covers what it's like to be wanting to be a journalist and journalistic writing and having an internship and what that will lead to. So it really does hit a lot of amazing buttons and it was just a really good read. And uh, thank you to Jenna for reading it with me so I could share my thoughts. And uh, yeah, lots more buddy reads coming up in the next month. So you can look to forward to some more of these videos where my, my thoughts are very clear because I've expressed them all over Snapchat chats about the book. So thank you so much for watching. I will leave the link to this one in the description box below. I will probably also leave a link to my written review in case that's more your thing. And I will be back with another video soon. So make sure you're subscribed so that, that one lands right in your subscription feed. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed. And uh, yeah, leave me a comment as always. I will see you soon.